Hello and welcome to another episode of Jesus Doctrine. Today my aim is to answer two questions. The first question is why is Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 4's genealogy so different? And the second question that I want to answer is why do we have Joseph's genealogy in Luke chapter 4 if Joseph is in no way a bloodline relative of Jesus because obviously Jesus didn't have an earthly father. Mary was pregnant as a virgin. And so I want to answer these two questions for you today. Why is Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 4's genealogy so different? Now, some people have said through the generations that the difference in these genealogies is because one is the bloodline genealogy and another is a genealogy of the inheritance. And it's really important that we understand this. You could have people directly related through a direct line of blood or there are others that could be established for the throne or for an inheritance because they've been adopted into a family or because another generation in your family didn't have any children and so that child was used to bring forth the inheritance of another family member and these concepts were very common in the old testament and so some people have taken that as a belief as to why well i don't believe that in matthew's genealogy we read about Mary's genealogy and it goes a little bit like this there were 14 generations from Abraham who was the father of the Jewish faith all the way to King David and then there were 14 generations from Solomon all the way through to the captivity and then there were 14 generations from the captivity all the way through to Jesus now don't think that these periods of time actually fit 14 generations there aren't 14 generations there really what we find here are summaries and snippets of the timeline of Jesus of the genealogy of Jesus picking out certain characters to reveal certain traits of the life of Jesus that is not the whole genealogy of Jesus through Mary it is just key people and the reason they've kept it to 14 is because 14 represents something beautiful. It's two times seven. The number 14 being used so frequently in the genealogy is very deliberate. David, when you add up the numbers that make up David in the Hebrew grammaton, you get 14. And as a result of it, 14 is linked to David. And they're trying to prove in the book of Matthew that Jesus is the son of David. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Hebrew grammaton and numbers because people use this to prove absolutely anything. But it's also interesting that we can look at it in another way. Six is the number of a man because man was made on the sixth day. And seven is the number of completion because God made everything in seven days. And so when we put the two together, we find that we have a man that is complete in all of his ways. We find Jesus six times seven equals 42 and it's pointing to the idea that there is a man that is perfect in his ways because God has made him complete and this is Jesus. So let's continue this. So there are names there but when you start to count the names you don't actually have 42 generations. You only have 41 in the English translations and the reason being is right at the end when you get to Joseph there I believe there's a mistranslation. The phrase husband of Mary I don't believe is meant to say that because that term husband there could also read fathered Mary and so we have an extra generation there so let me read how it reads in the King James and then I'm also going to tell you how it ought to read in my mind and Jacob begat Joseph the husband of Mary whom was born Jesus called the Christ so that's how the King James reads but this actually should read in my opinion like this and Jacob begat Joseph the father of Mary of whom Jesus who is the Christ can you see the difference that it actually adds another generation in there and Mary is the mother and it's Mary's lineage and this is the lineage of Christ through Mary and so this is Mary's genealogy whereas when we turn to the book of Luke we'll notice that this genealogy is very different. This genealogy goes all the way through Joseph, even though it tells us in Joseph's genealogy in the book of Luke that Joseph, the supposed father of Jesus. It's really important and significant that we note this. 
Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus. So why is this genealogy even in the Bible? If it's not directly related to Jesus, why is it there? Well, it's because it is the genealogy of Jesus in one sense. Jesus can receive his, his tribe through Mary, his mother, who was from that tribe, as I mentioned in a previous video. If you haven't seen it, click on the link above to watch it. But equally, Jesus can be from the tribe of Judah through the line of Joseph. Not that Joseph ever adopted him as his own son, but in the eyes of the law, because Mary fell pregnant whilst being married to Joseph, Jesus would automatically take on the inheritance of Joseph. And so Mary fell pregnant whilst engaged to Joseph. An engagement bought all the same legal rights as marriage. The difference being between marriage and engagement in the Jewish culture was that they would have moved in together into the extension that was built on the father's house so that Mary would be able to have a room with Joseph in the house of the family of Joseph. And that's how it would normally work. As a result of this, by the time that Mary actually gives birth, Mary is already formally married to Joseph. This is really important. Think about the nativity scene story for a moment. If Mary and Joseph were not formally married, do you think that they would be traveling a long ride on a donkey and staying in an inn or a hotel room together? Well, my point of this is for a very specific purpose. Mary and Joseph were actually married by the point that Jesus was born. Therefore, Jesus would have been legally considered to be the heir of Joseph and therefore the ge genealogy and the heritage of Joseph would have been passed on to Jesus. There are many significant differences between the genealogy in the book of Matthew and in the book of Luke. In the book of Matthew, the genealogy starts from Abraham, the father of the Jewish faith, and it continues to work its way down to Jesus. But in the book of Luke, it's the opposite. You start from Jesus and you go backwards in time all the way down to Adam. And so you see them actually in the reverse order. One goes all the way from Adam to Christ, but the other one only goes from Abraham to Christ. Now, the reason for this is simple. In the book of Matthew, the point of the genealogy is to teach us that Jesus is from the line of Abraham, the line of David, and he is the Christ. Whereas in the book of Luke, the point of this genealogy is to show all humanity that we are all descendants of Adam and that Adam was made in the likeness of God. And so too, when God came into this world, God was made in the likeness of man and that Jesus Christ is fully man and fully God. And that through his lineage, we can link man and God together. See, God was at the beginning of that timeline because Adam was a son of God. And God is at the end of that timeline because Jesus is the son of God. And so we see this lineage that links the two concepts together. It also not being strictly only about the Jews from Abraham. It links all of the Gentile nations to it. And it's really important that we remember that because Luke was not a Jew. He would have been a Gentile believer. And this is significant because Luke's gospel is not just appealing to Jewish tradition but it's also appealing to the Gentiles. And so the idea that all the nations, everyone that's a human that descended from Adam is linked to the genealogy of Jesus, not just the Jews. There are so many other differences and interesting points that I wanna point out about the genealogy in the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. So please do subscribe and keep watching my videos for more information.